and thank you for watching another live thing or re-live or whatever whenever you watch it um but yeah i've done one last night on the uh three beers from the brick brewery and i've had a few beers that have been kind of lurking in my fridge for quite a while so um classic belgian uh beers uh we've got the despite what the actual um thing says the actual thumbnail um it, th this is actually a 2015 vintage of Udegur's Boon Udegur's Boon 7% ABV this is a 37.5 centiliter bottle um I don't know where I actually picked this beer up, um, but anyway, they reckon or they recommend that, that the uh, the best before date on this is twenty thirty five. If you want to find out the year of your bottle that you, or the vintage that you've got, then you sub subtract um, or take away, shall I say, take away twenty years. So that makes this a twenty fifteen vintage. So yeah green bottle so that'll be the first beer we're gonna take a butcher's at so this was actually part of the brewing season of 2013 2014 as it says on the neck um hence why i've got the thumbnail wrong find out about a quarter of an hour before we go live so hey ho so we'll have a look at that one first um and here we've got one that I'll try and pronounce. Same brewery, uh, actual brewery. Let me just put this up so you know what we're talking about. It's that uh, out of uh, Belgium, as you, as you will know. So it's a boom. This is the uh, Oude Mirage Par Parfait. I'm probably butchering the, the hell out of that. And again, best before 2035, so that plants it in a 20. 15 but well, it's actually saying um 2013 vintage on the neck so i don't know what's i don't know but that's what it's got on the neck um uh, batch oh, 62,502 so that too does matter um so yeah same size bottle uh, this is eight percent abv which is quite a large um Gers ABV. So we'll, we'll crack on with that. Um, let's take a look at the the, uh, the history. I mean, there's, there's quite a history actually on, on this brewery, which is quite impressive. Um, we'll get, let me just do a screen share then, because I'm just looking for myself here. Um, we've got two people watching, so hope you're having a, a nice evening or early evening if you're in the States, or maybe an afternoon if you're further that side. Um, it's a bank holiday here in the UK, so hence why I'm doing a couple of last couple of nights some live streams. So why not? People have gone to bed, peace and quiet. Um, so we'll get the screen share going then. Do that, do that, share, let's go straight to the brewery. Boom. Oh, sorry. Here we are. Um, so let's go to the home page then. Land, they reckon that the actual Lang Beek is what's derived of from Lambeck. Um, some people call these beers Lang Beek. Um, same, same thing in my book, it doesn't matter really. Um, so here's the beers, here's the beers, and um, they've got. Let me go to the beers, actually. It's, it's probably easier to do this. So it's going to be a longer review. It's a live kind of thing. So um, my camera's a bit wonky. So it is what it is. It's a camera. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So we go down to this one then first. Let's have a look. I had a little look, but it's quite interesting to, to show anyone who's, who's watching sort of after or whatever. So this is the first beer, Udegur's Bean. <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, 
This Oude Geurs is a traditional unsweetened, unfiltered uh, Oude, Oude Geurs from Lambic. Uh, brewed from 60% malt and 40% wheat. It ripens on oak uh, fa famers under the name Lam Lambic. Um, this is more probably the most kind of core kind of interest I'd say on this page or about the beer um, before you even get it to your mouth. It consists of 90% tender lamb back of 18 months old. So it's like a, like a mini blend within, within the same kind of beer. 5% full bodied beer of three years and 5% of very young lamb back, which provides fermentable sugars and variable yeast. So we mix them in 25,000 litre mixing vessels and keep the mixture cool. To bottle, we bring the gears back to fermentation temperature. We place the bottles in air conditioned cellar so that the gears can ferment in the bottle. After a few months of ripening in the bottles, this gears gets its final taste. Um, after this fermentation in the bottle, it's given the name of Udu, Udu Gears Boon. So there you go. Um, there was one thing I wasn't sure about because I've had this beer a little while is the retention tips store the bottle upright in the dark. So there's lots of people say, oh, you should put it on its side if you're aging it, all that sort of thing. But that's what it, that's what it says there. So, we, you know, on their website. So that's kind of, that helps me at least anyway. I'm not the most experienced when it comes to these kind of beers. So although it's definitely something I'm looking into getting more reviews and stuff in the future for sure. Um, we won't go into taste notes. I, I kind of just saw that, but I, I didn't look look at it, etc. So we'll um, have a quick look at the next beer that we're going to do, and then we'll go into the first beer for tasting. Um, where are you? There you are. I like them glasses as well. I look really cool. Um, so we're getting to this. Is I think it's going to be a similar kind of thing. Um, uh, uh, Uda Marage, I'm, I'm butchering up already. Par parfait, par parfait, whatever you know. What I'm saying um, it's a traditional sweet. Blah, 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 uh, once a year, the the brewery boon a mixture of made of the several large barrels of lambic from three years old. This lambic is especially brewed. As this, da, 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 da. We're going to get to this bit. This gives us a special old goos of eight volume after maturation uh, of 12, sorry, six to 12 months in the bowl. Um, and that's it. It's pretty much it. There's a little bit more information on untapped, which is, which is cool. Um, feel free to give this beer, I don't know, you know the name, uh, a few years in the cell. It will presently surprise you. So, um, I've had one of these beer. I don't think I've had this beer before, but I've had the the, uh, the first beer, the Udukur's Boon. I've had a 2014 vintage, I believe. Um, anyway, enough waffle. Let's start pouring the beers or opening them first. So we'll stop sharing that. We'll go into other things in a minute. Two, three people watching. Wow, cool. Thanks. Thanks for uh, tuning in at this hour if you're in the UK. So we'll crack open this then first. It's got a little cork and cage, so nothing could go wrong. It's live, so you know. There we go. It's coming out already. Little hiss, a little bit of smoke. Not too bad. That's quite easy, isn't it? And the actual cork is still kind of damp on the the lower part of the cork, so that's corking. <laughs> Right, I've got these little, uh, here we go, we've got these little glasses from the uh, London Craft Beer Festival, I've got a couple of them, so we'll just use that, I like the, it's kind of like a small, kind of concentrated top to this one, so I don't get any kind of aromas and, and whatnot. It's not too crazy, which is a good thing, sometimes these beers can go a bit, a little bit mad, so we'll leave it like that, so I'll get my honk in there. And there's loads of kind of them floaties floating around the bottle, at the bottom of the bottle, that is. 
So I think what I'll do, I'll open both at the same time. We'll get this kind of thing out of the way first. We'll keep that there. We'll put that there so we know what beer it is. And we'll just open this other one as well and let it sit for a minute. Oh, is that coming off? I thought it's the creaking of the cork then. I thought it was going to actually come off before I even... Oh, nice. Getting the cage off would be interesting. I don't mind the cork. Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah, that's easy as well. Will it go everywhere? Will it... Smoke. There's a dark bit in the background. There you go. Just about caught that. So we'll put that there. Let that calm down just for a second. People say, oh, you should be pouring it straight away. Whatever. So back to the Uda Boon. Uda Gears Boon. Get it right. 7% ABV then. So we'll get the... Uh, and it is. And I've just realised I haven't done something here. What review am I actually doing? I can't remember. I think it's 11, 12. I think it's about 12. Yeah, that'll do. That one. We'll do that. And that's it like that. So, yeah, beer in a glass. It's a kind of a strawy colour. Didn't pull much of a head. Getting a Roman then on this thing. Oh, man. It's one of them styles that I don't drink enough of, but every time I kind of do, it's like just the aroma alone. I know they're not everyone's kind of cup of tea. It's got a very kind of slightly acidic apple. Definitely wheat. Belgian funk, maybe a touch of white grape. Oh man, it's just a, the aroma is just. It's one of them beers that I just generally, I'm doing a review now, but generally I'd love to pair with food, cheese, meats, that kind of deal. Bit of cracker. This has got a lot of that slight wheaty character of um, cracker, maybe. Maybe a slight dryness, but yeah. Beautiful aroma. So we'll get in straight for the taste on this one. So cheers. I've got one comment. We'll get to that in a minute. Oh, man. That's beautiful. It's got a nice kind of... There is that almost like a oak oakiness, a slight oakiness in this one. Like a white grape, white wine kind of-esque kind of general feel to the beer maybe a bit cidery we're not crazy like it's more complex than a cider an oaky cider almost it's trying to work it out and try and explain it on camera it's these kind of style of beers the lambex the gers that that kind of family of beers for me they are so complex sometimes it's very hard to try and for, for me at least it's probably easy for other people whatever trying to describe it because they're, they're 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 a real thinking beer if you really sit down and drink it and think about it it's like it, it's amazing to me anyway that is fabulous that really is it's going down really easy yeah. I'm having some more. Well, I've got to drink it all anyway, so I'm going to have some more then. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah. Right. More aromas. Let's go for a bit more aroma action. There's a slight almost citrusiness, maybe. Maybe a little bit of, I don't know, it's grapefruit, but definitely getting the oak tannins on this one. Definitely need food with these. Maybe after the, the show. God damn, that's good. That's so nice. 
So this is saying a bit more information here. Um, 100% Lambic. Um, I can't even pronounce the rest. I'm not even going to go there. Um, they've won a gold medal at the, the Beer World Cup um, in 2012 with this beer. Um, is there any information in English? Fortunately, there's not. So I'm not going to bother going any further. But what I will do is go to the comment because there is one there. And yes, of course, my good friend Harry over at Blue Nose Beer Reviews. <clears throat> Pardon me, decent beer. Indeed, it is. It's a uh, <clears throat> bit of a belching action with that. Although it didn't pour a kind of, didn't look like a lot of uh, carbonation was going on with it. it you can slowly feel feeling it build up in the in the kind of pity stomach and then rah but the actual burp is quite low if you if you like burps there you get a kind of an after flavor which is to me a bonus with beer it, it comes out good like this one is mm. That's, that is blinding um yeah so i've had the the 2014 vintage I actually thought this was for some reason a 2014, 2013 vintage, and then I looked at the label and it's like, that's the brewing season, you idiot. Um, and then you subtract the 20 years, and then it, it, it lands at 2015. So, therefore, I've had the, the 2014 vintage of this um, uh, tasting over at the uh, the Night Swift, or formerly Bottle Shop Margate, I had it there, um, which is where I got this beer from. I'm pretty sure this is where I got that one from. Probably not. I think I've got both there, to be fair. Anyway, let's see uh, what Untapped have to say. There's a bit more information about the brewery, so I'm going to go on to that in a second when I work out what I'm doing here. Uh Yes, I want to screen share, and I've got to do that. And then we go up to is that yeah, brewery boom? Is it that one? Yes, there we go. So, this brewery has been around in this name since 1975. Um, and then it goes back, it says here, first signs of the brewery date back to 1680, so before I was born then. Um, was a farm brewery and distillery in the village of Lambic, which is, as I said earlier, part of the, uh, what, potentially the, the, that, well, the Lambeck name come from. Um, in 1860, Lewis uh, Paul brought brewery to brew only Lambeck and Faro. Um, from 1875, he began bottling Gers, Gers Lambeck in Eighteen hundred, blah blah blah. You can see for yourself. It's, it's all it's all written here. Um, still really interesting. There is a hell of a lot of history about this, and I've actually put a uh, Wikipedia link down below at the very bottom. Um, just after this is on down below as well. If you want to read this again, um, what's that? He had no children. So the brewery back to uh, Frank Boone. So there you go. I assume that was uh, when this was born. Boone. It was Boone in 1975. Um, and that's it. That's about the brewery. Um, we'll go to the actual first beer then um, and then see what is what. It's pretty much everything you've, we've already read on the website. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of leave all that. This All, all this information is down below as well. So... You want to read anything like this about the beer just scroll down hopefully you can still hear me um so this beer in its various kind of vintages i guess this is the, the, the kind of generic um untapped uh, version of this um as you can see other variants are down here on the right hand side um so yeah it goes you know i don't know how many different variants they have on here but yeah it's a shitload i would imagine um so this, this as a generic beer, this beer, not the vintage, this actual beer, has, has had uh, 
just, just well, yeah, just seventy nine thousand. We'll call it then uh, total check ins. It's had nine hundred and seven in the last thirty days of various um, vintages, I'd guess. Uh, fifty seven thousand two hundred ninety eight actual ratings. Then, as you see, as you can see, it's seven percent ABV. Uh, three point five one. Now. I should have given you my rating before I've done all this, but hey ho, I'm, I'm going to give it now. I'll give it one more sip. I don't know if you're seeing me on screen. I think you are. Yes, you are. So, this is for me a. I'm giving this a 3.75. So, I'm giving this a 7.5 out of 10 on, on the 0 to 10 scale. So, 375 on the untap scale. Pretty damn cool. Pretty nice. Um, yeah. Right, let's clear off this for a minute, and we'll see. I think there's some more comments coming through. I can't see the screen at the moment. There might not be. Um, no, there's not. <laughs> Excellent. Mind you, I've got six people watching, so thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a great evening, bank holiday weekend here in the UK, and I'm hot. So, um, I'm sweating as well. So, it's kind of like a... Yeah, I fancy doing this weather at the moment. Sours last night, some Lambex tonight. Yeah, let's let's, uh, let's, let's bring out the Lambex. So, um, right then, let's go and we'll go for this one now. Let me get the banners up because I keep forgetting to do bloody blahs. That one. So we're doing that now. It's 8% ABV, as I said, it's a... Uh, a gur of gurs, which eight percent is pretty. It's pretty decent ABV for the style of beer, by all accounts. Not why, not what I'm telling you. It's what I've kind of little research I've done. Let's generate a little bit of. Uh, it might not burp so much this time. <coughs> he says, "Oh mate." So this one is a, a bit more of a kind of a. A darker, I don't know if that's coming up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that one. That one's darker, as you can see. It's a bit more kind of going in for this. This is more the basic um, Erdegers from uh, the Brewery Boon. We're going to the, the actual description, etc., in a moment. So uh, give it a swirl and a sniff. Oh, wow. So how's that varying from this? It's, it seems almost like fuller bodied, or just a, or a more fuller aroma. It's got a bit more. Almost, you can almost smell the body of the beer. I find in some beers, and I'm getting it with this. This has got more of a, a slight, more of a, yeah, more of an oak character, I'd say. Cheese, like a, a distant whiff of a strong cheddar. A little, yeah, the wheat. Nice kind of wheat kind of body, almost. I'm just going to go... And get some water before I all the plastic. Oh yeah, it's so terrible that it's still available. Oh man! Right, let's go for this. Cheers. Wow, well, yeah. It's quite sweet. It's almost like a sweet um, gers. I've never had this one. Wow. Yeah, real kind of almost like vinous quality to this one. White grape again, but just a little bit more intense. The ABV as well, I mean 8%. <laughs> that, that helps the body of a beer straight away. Um, although, to be fair, this one is not drinking like a 7% beer. This one is probably 
not drinking like an eight percent beer, but you know it's a, a kind of a bigger ABV beer kind of thing. That one you 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 could be pleasantly surprised or or a bit scared if you're not used to bigger ABV beers. This one you've yeah, it's more body. We'll go into the details of the beer in a minute, but I'm just well, I'm interested in enjoying it. We've got five viewers again. Anyone who's new, thanks for joining. Tell you rubbish, I know. It's not mine, but whatever. This is going down so nice. Bit more. This it, there is a nice kind of wheat. Again, wheat character. But there's the element of there's a little bit more involvement in this beer. So I'm, I'm quite intrigued. I'm getting kind of a citrusiness. Um, is it grapefruit? Definitely getting the oak tannins. It's very, they're very similar beers. Just this one has got a bit more body for me. It's a little bit heavier on the palate. The body on this one's the upper end odd sway, well, medium, upper end of a medium. This one's probably a lower end, lower end or mid range medium. There's not much in it, but it's, subtle, it's, it's very subtle. So it's nice to do them side by side just to compare, you know. So I like to go compare. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know what I was going to say. Don't worry about me. Um, let's do a screen share again, get my face off here, which I'll, I'm, I'm very happy to do. Uh, bomb, bomb, bomb. That's a song. Is it this one? It's not that one. Is it that one? No, that's the, that one. There we go. Don't worry about me. Right, so this one is. Let's find the interesting bits of this quite long commercial description then. Um, so it's pretty much at the top alcohol content of 8%. It can consists of 95% mild Lambic, aged at least three years, and uh, specifically reserved for this purpose, and 5% of young Lambic. So this has got a lot, this has got like 5% more, excuse me, burping power in it, 95% um, more of that older Lambic. Um, so that 5%, is that making a difference? probably um i i don't know why i'm picking up it's definitely got more of a body to it it's a little bit more intense obviously it's a higher abv that could be the five percent from a seven to a to an eight of that aged lambic that are giving it just to get a little bit more potentially i'm probably wrong um and five percent young lambic uh the lack provides the fermentation sugars and wild yeast after Mixing in a vessel of again 125,000 litres. Uh, the work unfermented uh, mixture is filtered and chilled. If we are bottling, we bring it to back to fermentation temperature. The bottle is very similar, it's a very similar kind of commercial description, apart from the top part up here. Um, and then he goes, You go, want to know the bottling date, simply subtract 20 years from the best before date so there you go which is how I'm, i kind of knew that anyway so i actually knew that for some reason so it's saying here mildly sour berry taste sour berry i suppose so i mean it's not it's not overly sour it's more of the of the complexities of the uh, the yeast that I'm picking up more than anything else. Um, we'll, we'll, I don't. I think you can still see me. Um, I don't know. I don't think you can even see the screen, can you? I can't on the actual thing for some reason. You can't, can you? I don't think you can. Why? Uh, Stop sharing, it says. So it must be sharing. I don't know what. Whatever. Should we go back? Yeah, sharing. So what's going on there? I don't know. Let's just stop sharing. Rubbish. Whoa. Let's give this another whirl. Mm. 
wild berry. I'm not really, what else does it say? Sorry, I should have got the page back up. It says, I'll just read it to you, it's easy. Um, yeah, the oak barrels aromas in which the, the gir, this girls marage para, paraphate, parfait, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's got more of an oak character, it's saying. Uh, the body speaks of volumes of vanilla, I'm not really picking that up, followed by a bitter aftertaste of clove, intense, sublime. I'll go, for, I'll, I'll agree with the sublime. That's beautiful. Really damn nice. So, let's check the comments, because I think there's none. No more comments. So, there you go. So, we get back to the banners. So, these beers are available. I'll just, have to, just a little look. Link down below. Both beers are available on beermerchants.com. Um, so the link to the uh, the breweries page is there. There's so rather bits and pieces um, that they have on their on their website. It's just a random search and it come up beer merchants and they had a few other bits of it. There you go. Um, but I don't. I didn't get them from there. Pardon me. Um, so I mean, you can pick these up. You can put them away for as long. Well, as as you as you know, they've got a twenty year shelf life on these beers from when they put in the bottle. So. You can drink it or age it, doesn't matter, whatever. There's nothing that's going to, uh, they'll probably get better over time, of course. Um, but then sometimes beers, I think, to be drunk. Um, you, you know, you, you can go and buy like six of them or whatever. Yeah, you could drink one or two now. Drink one or two in like five years time, 10 years time, 15 years time, whatever. Whatever you want to do, isn't it, at the end of the day. Um so yeah, and let me just show you what they've actually got on there. So hopefully this will actually screen share. I, I don't know, if, can someone tell me if that last screen share worked? That'd be cool. So let's just uh, go here. Oh, I'm sweating like anything there. So free plug for beer merchants. I'm sure they'll send me some beers because of this. <laughs> uh, so new in. They've got the uh, Uda Gurs Mega Blend 2019 there. I did do some research about that earlier. I was like, oh, that looks good. Um, so that's a big old bowl. That's a 750. This is uh, a Boone. I can't even pronounce that. Boone Creek then. Yeah, we'll go with that. Boone Creek. Um, I'm guessing it's a vintage of, of sorts. I know, Harry, if you're still watching, you've done... A review of the Boone Black Label. I don't know if it was this version. I think it was. Um, was it? I can't remember who he was with. I, I saw it on on uh, the YouTube's earlier. I know you've done that, so that's uh, so. Hopefully, uh, there's some incredible. Well, I'm reading the actual comments from my phone here. Yeah, there, there is. It's all empty. So unfortunately, but yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been fortunate the last two or three years to get some pretty damn good beers from America mainly. And then, yeah, but there's some great beers from the UK, of course. The original Cloudwater series one to thirteen, various other pretentious beers there. So uh, to show off. Yeah, not that I'm showing off, but it's just more of a background than anything else. But yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, the, the screen is shot behind is is God, that's a long way behind. That's why I'm like I'm so far behind on the actual watching. There we go. We are up to date now. I've just moved it forward like 15 minutes. <laughs> right, so yeah, you are seeing this. So um, so here's the best sellers, and then, yeah, two of the beers here, the middle two. Um, so I might at some point pick these two up and do like a – they are different, but these two are very, very similar. Um, so that could be a future live show coming up. Um, we'll see. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, what else have they got then? What's the rest? 
it's just the larger I've got the larger bottles of what I'm having you know, so that and then I've got a larger bottle so I've not had that before so that's a three yeah so that's a, a creek version of, of the second beer so so that'd be interesting to do a bit of research and stuff on that so i'm learning as i'm doing this myself so it's pretty cool just to put it out there at the same time so anybody who's experienced like yeah yeah i know all that yeah. um yeah that's fine we're all different stages of uh, knowledge i guess so so yeah interesting page so uh go and check them out for sure We'll stop sharing this for a second. We'll go across here. We have two comments, which one of them I've already uh, shown. So, Siman270. And I'm off to Prague at the end of the week. Hopefully, I can find some decent beers. You're going to find some decent beers. If you're on Untapped or something, it's a really good tool, I, I, I think. Um, if you're going somewhere new, or if you've been before, then it's kind of like, yeah, you, you know already. But, I, you know, um, I would definitely, if you're untapped, check out what's local to you. Um, if there's a bar that's um, got like a tap list or something, or it's um, a verified venue and untapped, then that's really damn cool. You can find out what's on at that time hopefully it's within you know a day or two of you visiting a certain bar or another one which you probably already know which i think is probably the best part of rape beer um you could do a bar search on there globally in any city or town in the world pretty much and it generally gives you a list some of them are going to be either shut or there might be new ones added on on there but generally you know that, that kind of just so that's a good tool i think that's a, the only thing it's worth but that's just me um, but I would use Untapped personally, a great app um, for anything like that. So hopefully you, you can find some decent beery places and yeah, just let us know as well. Let us know how you get on as well. That'd be cool in the future. It's going to sip on this for a little while and then uh, yeah, we're coming up to 45 minutes. That's not too sad. I'll take my time more on these. I've done three beers, 45 minutes like last night. These are these are more kind of like complex. So a bit of water, and I'll go back to the first one. I think I gave a rating on the first one. Yeah, I did. 375. But I still want to taste the first one, just to see in my mind, shall I do a blend? Shall I do a coffee? As um, my good friend, Joe, over at um, the Beer Patrol would do. I didn't even think about doing that. I'll do a Kubi. I've only got a glass here that's worth. I'll do it in a Chamay glass. Why not? If I can. There we go. We'll do it in a Chamay glass. We'll do it in a minute. I just wanted to try a bit of that. I've still got a bit in each bottle. So we'll, we'll do what's in the bottles straight into here and see how that that all works out. That could be quite interesting, I think. This is more this is more delicate more light more approachable um it could still be a little bit too if you're new to the style of, of the, the girls stroke lambex kind of family of beers if you like then it could be a bit too much it, it, i mean i'm where my palate is now probably the last well last two and a half years i'd say i've been doing sours probably the last six months to a year probably more than that a year and a half i've been doing lab or trying different lambics pouring bottle shares and tastings and that sort of thing i don't think i've ever reviewed i probably have i just can't remember i don't think i've reviewed that many lambics and, and and the like so but yeah so that'd be quite interesting so we'll do a cool why not We'll do that one, and we'll do the other one. You know what I mean, son? So we're going to get all the dregs out of this. Dregs from both bottles. Bit of a... Uh, Drudge jigs. 
Grudstrix. I'm trying to think of his name. I can't remember. So that's that much. Everyone's like, no, don't blend it. What are you doing? Yeah, why not? I've got a decent amount from, from each bottle in the glass still. So, uh, although I do think there's a bit more in here. I'm going to pour a bit more into the glass. There's quite a bit more in there. So we've got half a pint in the glass. And we've got that much left in the bottle. So we're just going to blend this in there. Judge Dread, Judge Dread, Judge Dregs, Dregs, here we go, that's what I was trying to say, stupid dad joke, got them hot, it's hot in here, I'm not taking off my clothes, so don't worry about that, give it a swirl, and a sniff then, a blend, let me take that off as well, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I know that pills not. Uh, yeah, pills are alcohol. But don't fancy drinking those for two weeks. I'll check on taps for sure. Yeah, it'd be cool. I mean, I've never been, so I've no kind of. I know other people, certainly friends of mine, that have been, and they were like, "Oh, go here, go there, go this." And it's like, I don't know to be honest. I do my if I know I'm going somewhere, I'll do the research kind of kind of deal. If you know what I mean, but. Um, until that point, I it winds me up. I think, oh, I'd love to go there. I'd love to go here. I could do loads of research and be like, oh. you know what I mean? But when I know I'm going somewhere, I'm on it. So, yeah, I'd be all over the internet trying to find stuff. So this is blended around for a while. Oh, it looks really... I mean, it's the, the bottom of the bottles, so it's going to be a lot hazier and stuff. It's actually darker than that. As I said to you, that's more of a representation of what the actual beer looks like. It's that dark. And as the light comes in, it's like bright. So, aroma then on this blend, the Uda Gurs Boon and the Gurs Mirage Parfait, or whatever you call it. That. Both 2015 vintages. Could be. Wow. It's not quite as... Yeah, it's not as intense as the uh, Gers second beer, Parfait. Which is not going to be. It's a bit diluted from, from the other beer. So, But even still, I mean, it's very similar kind of deal, aroma. Very oaky. Yeah, oak tannins, very kind of like farmhousey, blankety sort of dry, very kind of wheat, wheat kind of malt, not malt, but you know, what I mean, it's got that kind of wheatiness to it. Yeah, just go straight in there and see what this tastes like. Interesting one. Cheers. Oh, it's very sweet at the end. It's a very there's, there's like a there's a uh, a sharp sharpness, a sharpness of a sweet, a sharp sweet. Oh wow, very sweet. Slightly, yeah, a little bit acidic. Slightly sherbet -y almost. Wow, that's... It's nothing like the two other beers at all. Perhaps it's the um, the, the, the yeast at the, the bottom of the bottles. It almost certainly is. Yeah, 
let's just have a bit of drink and water and then we'll go back to um you know so i'm just shooting this year if you know this we've done most of the the the, the, the actual what i wanted to do but this is more ra excuse me random kind of chat now that water's great i was always gonna rate my water I've seen websites where you can rate other things like that. Yeah. Although it's still got a lot of floaties in it. I mean, considering it wasn't near the bottom of the bottle, I don't know if you're picking... No, you're not really. Let's see if I can focus this in on the actual glass rather than... There we go. What coming out? There's little particulates just hanging around. Not really going anywhere. No, 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 I'm out of focus. Probably a good thing. <laughs> Sounded like the office then. I'm in my office. <sighs> yeah, I mean. It's not as good as it's definitely not as good as both the other beers for sure for my palate it's nice to try it but i think the core of the flavor of the beer is above the yeast in both bottles i'm assuming that um oh days so damn hot today so we go back there's a rating then. I didn't even give a rating for the uh, second beer, did I? We'll do that then. We'll do this first. Sort of. Yeah, this is more kind of more flavour, more more of that kind of classic gers. Very strong though. I mean, 8%. You are picking up a bit of alcohol on that one. I'm not going to lie. The more I'm drinking, the more I'm getting that kind of slight burn in the pit of the stomach kind of deal. So this is the, uh, if you're joining just now, is it that one? Yeah, this is this one. That one. This is the 2015 vintage. I actually put that on the thing. I need to change the thumbnail, but whatever. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm giving that um, a solid four out of five on the untapped scale, um, an eight out of ten. Then I've had some really good um, Lambecks and Gerses before that have just been like wow, wow beers. These are probably, I mean, these are still for me. Depends where your palate is. I mean, these are still damn good beers. Um, they're the more regular ones that you're probably going to come in contact with within the style. Um, the, the, you know, the, these are the more kind of like, I would say entry level, but probably are entry level, I'd say. Pardon me for the Lambeck and Gers kind of, well, Gers beers. They're the more likely you're going to see, for sure. Um, and then it goes, it goes, it starts to get a bit crazy after that. In my little kind of year and a half kind of experience, it goes, oh, we've got to make a blend, as I showed you earlier, make a blend this. You got, oh, we've got that. that. And then you go into like things like cantions and stuff like that. And it's just goes into another, another level um, altogether. Um, but I like Free Fontaine. I think Free Fontaine are like for me. Um, they just had recently had a they had a beer festival this weekend in Belgium that two of my friends went to. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. B X L Brussels, whatever you call it, was this weekend. I was like, oh wow, that that would have been amazing to go to. I'm not sure if I'd be handle loads of Lambeck and sour beers and. 
I'd have to seriously break it up. I think I'd struggle as much as I want to go to Belgium and do do stuff over there. Oh, you've you've. I'd take a box of Gaveston, Gaveston with me for sure. It's just that my my guts would be in pain, um, as well as my liver. But yeah, my my guts would be like, what are you doing to me? Um, but anyway, let me just. Uh, so yeah, that's an eight out of ten. That's a great beer. The uh, second beer, the Gers Marage Parfait. I've probably called it about five times, different names in this kind of like a live stream. So, and as 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 for the cuvee, cuvee, I will give this. Yeah, it's not nowhere near as good as the other two. A seven, as a as I said, a three point seven five and a four on tap scale i'm gonna give this around about three two five um it's not it, it you know the, the blend didn't quite work but it was you know an experiment and i had no idea people were like oh what are we doing as i've already said it's like yeah it's i don't take it seriously so it's like well, i'm still gonna drink it it's not a drain pour no way We'll do that one. We'll do that one again. So that's cool. So let me check the comments of which we probably have none. No. So um, these beers have, I mean, we're going not quite an hour. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably give it bang on the hour and then I'll clear off. So I've got a bit of time. Um, what is anyone what would you recommend um lambeck beers goza beers goza Go, uh, gers beers gozas what if you've had any have been your like some of the favorites you've you know ever had mega blend or comments put the comments in and i'll we'll have a chat for 10 minutes before i clear off they're up to six viewers which is crazy it's pretty damn cool so thanks for joining. Um, I've just realised I'm actually on the wrong internet. It seems to be working, which is very lucky. Um, so I'm just going to sip on these beers, and if anyone's got any comments? If not, I'll I'll, uh, I'll clear off. Hmm. So yeah, that's that beer on screen. And the other beer that would—that's the second beer, as you can see. So I put the other one up. So. We are drinking two beers from, here we go, just a little recap then, uh, Brebun from Lambic, uh, Valerian uh, in Belgium. First beer was that. Um, and I should put the 13 on that. I've just realised. Uh -uh. I'm doing all this kind of pre-stuff and then I, I completely forget to uh, update shenanigans. So that was the first beer. Which I gave a three seven five. This is the second beer. Um, both twenty fifteen vintages, of course. Um, and yeah, that that one for me was was the one. Um, it just just edged out the um, the other uh, classic beer from Brody Boone. So yeah, and then I done a. Um, if you just joined, you probably just gone in and left, or whatever. Um, old uh Kuvi. and yeah that, that, that didn't kind of that didn't work but at least it's nice to know it didn't work for me it might work for someone else it's a little bit sweeter it lost a little bit it's kind of complexity a little bit um but yeah so this was the beer the, the the one the uh the show if you like um cracking cracking stuff in this weather yeah I'm all for this drinking this sort of style of beer. So, four viewers, we've lost a couple because I'm starting to waffle. Again, well, it's just gone midnight here in the UK. So, um, if we've got any other comments then, um, do check out uh, Beer Merchant for the, both of these beers. And there's a few other bits and pieces from the um, same brewery. So, check them out. That was my little research done earlier. So, oh, where, if anyone wants to get these beers, where are they going to get them? 
there you go um links down below there's a link for the whole the brewery they're on facebook and they've got a twitter account don't think they're on instagram um commercial descriptions are down there i've also got a belgian um beer playlist down there somewhere near the bottom um more information about both of the beers which you've already seen on untapped but they're all copied and pasted down below um so yeah right so no one's giving me any comments or anything so yeah four or five people six people whatever it is um thanks for watching and if you're watching the rerun check out all the information down below appreciate it if you're new to the channel please subscribe and all that shenanigans um yeah pretty damn cool anyway i'm gonna clear off um have a good bank holiday monday if you're in the uk or whenever you're watching this i hope you're having a good monday or wherever you're watching in the future so anyway till next time on the i might do make this a regular thing at least once a week do a couple of beers live um put your comments down below as well um if you're watching on the rerun um i'd like to i want to do more of this kind of thing um i don't feel you know it's more of a i mean i don't mind i suppose it's the same kind of thing you do you turn the camera on my little this is what i actually use maybe i'll just go into a little bit of extras behind the scene kind of deals this is what i actually use to record my beer reviews um it's a little sony it's a sony uh handycam it's a uh, hdrcx45 it's a 4.2 megapixel camera um i got that three years ago four years ago whenever it was um that's why oh, no, i've got a tripod mount from another hobby just there um and that's it it's just there and when you see the reviews it's just a slightly different angle um when i'm in this room or i'm not in the garden or or whatever but yeah that's that's pretty much what i use it's a pretty handy little kind of thing as you can see so yeah that's what i use for that and yeah anyway i'm waffling uh, thanks for watching again. I really do appreciate it. Um, hope you enjoyed the little kind of a hour show um, of these two classic Belgian girls beers from the Brewery Boom. Anyway, thanks for watching again. I'm saying that again. Should I say thanks for watching? I will. Right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>